Hi, I'm Mitch Gallagher. Welcome to Sweetwater's iOS Update. This time out, I've got an audio analysis app and a measurement microphone that can also be used for capturing your tracks. Let's get started. If you'd like to check out the acoustics of your room, maybe it's a stage you're playing on, maybe it's your home recording studio, maybe it's a project studio you're going into, or you'd like to look at the frequency response of a mix that you're playing, an analysis app can be very useful. And I've got a really cool one for you to check out this time. This is DSP Mobile's Analyzer. Analyzer shows you what's happening in the frequency domain. So we have a bar graph that indicates the various frequencies and the sound that's being heard in the room by the microphone that you're using. For example, if I stop talking, you'll see the analysis of just the, the quiescent background noise in my office here. We have a variety of settings we can apply to this to let us zoom in and see exactly what we want to see. We can set the response to slow or fast. We also have A, B, and C weighting, or you can turn the weighting off. You can put, turn on hold, which lets you see where the, uh, the peaks are for each of the frequency bands. You can also take a snapshot of what's going on on the screen. When you do that, an icon appears up here. You can export that icon. You can save a clone, which shows it back on the screen again. You can change the color of that. You can remove it. And of course, you can save it as a record as well, so you can call it up again later. We also can look at the frequency response over time. When we turn on LEQ, the display changes to show you what's happening instantaneously, but then there's also another display in the background that shows you the effects of the frequency response in the room over time. You can also choose what bandwidth you want to see. So if we turn off LEQ, we'll go back over here, we can set things to one octave. We can turn that up to a third octave display like you might have on a graphic equalizer. We can split it to 12th octave, which gives us much finer resolution, or we can actually turn that way up and get one two hundredth of an octave resolution if you really want to see what's going on. Now, of course, it's difficult to see exactly what's happening here. If you hold your finger on the screen, you get a reticle that appears, so you can scroll over and see what's happening. Or you can also zoom way in, which allows you to see what's happening in a particular frequency range. Double tap to go back out to the full screen display. Now, there are a variety of ways that you can get audio into Analyzer so you can see what's happening. What I'm using right now is the built-in microphone that's inside the iPad, and there actually is calibration inside Analyzer that takes into account the frequency response of that mic and turns it into a flat response signal. The other thing we can do, we have a generator built in, so we can turn on white noise, pink noise, or a sine wave generator. If you want to get an even better picture of what's happening in your room, you can use a better microphone. There are two ways to do that. First of all, you can use an external hardware audio interface and you can route a microphone into that. The second way to get audio input into the analyzer is to use a microphone connected to the headset jack. I'll have an example of that to show you in just a second. And when you do that, again, you can apply calibration providing you're using one of the microphones that's supported by the analyzer app. Analyzer also has other features that you can use. You can save the entire setting that you have going on here as a workspace. You can export that. You can caption the displays, change the colors, do those sorts of things. You can also change to a line graph representation if you prefer that over a bar graph. Under the settings menu, we have a variety of things we can do there as well. This is where you can store records of your analysis that you're doing. We have different settings for setting up the inputs, the outputs, level calibration, calibration for microphones, the way the meter responds, those kinds of things. We have different ways we can set up the frequency response. There's also a store tab that lets you purchase additional frequency calibrations for microphones you might want to use. There are several that are available here. There are, there are three from Apple that use the uh, microphones that are built into their earbuds. There also are some Mic W microphones that are supported. And again, I'll be showing you one of those in just a second. I found Analyzer to be a really useful app to have on my iPad. I use it for analyzing different control rooms when I go in, rooms I might be recording in, different spaces where I want to check out the audio response. It's very straight ahead, fast, easy to use once it gets set up. It's really just a matter of turning it on. You can see exactly what's happening in the room. I mentioned earlier that you can use external microphones along with the Analyzer app to get a better picture of what's happening in your room. One that works really well is one of the microphones from Mike W. Now they make three different models. There's the i436, which is the one I have here. This is an omnidirectional microphone. They also make two cardioid models, the i456 and the i266. All three of those microphones are supported with calibrations inside the Analyzer app. The i436 comes stored inside this metal tube, which helps protect it. When you open this up, the microphone comes out. It's very compact. But you screw the lid back on the metal tube, and it actually becomes a mic stand for the microphone. Slides into this ring, attach this to a mic stand, and you're ready to go. 
The i436 comes with a variety of accessories. There's a clip for turning it into a lavalier, there's a windscreen, a foam windscreen, there's also a Y cable so when you connect this into your iPad, your iPhone, your iPod Touch, you can run the microphone into one side and get headphones out on the other side so you can monitor what you're recording. The final accessory is a nice long extension cable so you can get the microphone away from the iPad. Now if you're using an analyzer like this, you could actually plug the microphone straight into the iPad. Then we go over to our settings screen. Go to frequency response, turn on the calibration for the i436. Now the audio that's feeding into the analyzer is actually coming in through the microphone. Now if you want to use the noise generator that's in analyzer along with the microphone, just use that Y cable that comes as one of the accessories. You can feed the audio out into a speaker, plug the microphone in, you'll be able to use that to analyze your room using the noise generator. In addition to being a great measurement microphone, the i436 is also nice for recording. It works with any of the recording apps. So if we pop over here to, uh, let's say, 4-Track, we are on one of the tracks, and now that signal is being fed in using this microphone. Again, we have that extension cable, so we could use that to put the microphone onto a guitar amp for vocals, for an acoustic guitar, whatever source we might be recording. I think you'll find the Mic W i436 a very useful addition to your iOS arsenal. It's designed to work specifically with an iPad, an iPhone, or an iPod Touch, works great for analysis, and it also works great for recording purposes. I hope you've enjoyed this installment of Sweetwater's iOS update. Be sure to tune in next time. We'll have more apps, more hardware, and more tips for making music with your iOS devices. I'm Mitch Gallagher.